you create distance from your life, your identity, who you believe that you are, you will see who you truly are beyond that. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I want to jump on and do this quick little video. I kind of talked a little bit about it in the previous video about um, our life, you know, as the role that we're playing out in our set points and our separate identities. And I kind of mentioned where actually we don't stay within the body. Um, when we are sleeping, we actually don't exist as human form. It's just the body that continues to exist. Um, on its own within its own self we're always attached to it which also leads to us bringing energy and vibration to it and so uh, when we wake then we know to come back right but it's the realization that we don't exist as, as the body you know as we are sleeping only when we're waking right and so as a child I had um, had these experiences where actually I was leaving the body I was a, about a teenager and it would always be this uh, projection of self, right? And so my understanding of myself leaving the body, going to into this dark um, uh, space, right? And so that is uh, what we do when we actually transition out of um, this lifetime, which now makes sense when I can reflect back to that set point when I had that as a memory for myself, right? And so as I was a teenager going off to sleep, I would always have this ref uh, projection of self going off into this darkness. It was like all darkness around me. And then it was like almost closing in on me and then I disappear, right? So myself, my human form disappeared and my myself went into the darkness, which is the closing off of this world into a realm, into the other existence. So when we are leaving the body, whether it's at death or during our sleeping state, we don't exist as the body. It's the framework that's here already. And so we just take it up. We continually take it up every day, every day, every moment. So when you come back into the body, whether it's going to be a new body, a new existence, you know, once this is worn out or we're coming back into this body that we're playing out in this role, this lifetime, uh, we can see that from when we're coming in. And so if you take the time every morning to see this, to take a look at this and to just be present as you are awakening, right? All the memories just start flooding back in to who you are in the form, right? And it's because it's the memories that are coming back in as you're awakening into this life and then you take up and then if you are in the human constructs at that point of your journey, then you just think it, it's you waking up into this day lifetime again, but it's actually a new set point every day is a new set point but it's also just the collective energy coming back to you as you're coming back into form in the awakening experience of this lifetime right and so we can transform it um, we can delay that process of all well, that information coming back if we do this incrementally every day every morning just take time and i know we have busy busy lives but if you're wanting to transform your life you know it's worth looking at um, and so as we are awakening you know as we are leaving the body and even buddhist practice this um, as you're leaving the body and you're going off to sleep just be mindful stay present in the moment as much as possible as you are dozing off and see yourself as what's going on right don't imagine what's going on just allow it to show it to you right so you're setting your intention to understand the transition from, you know, the, the wake state to the sleep state and then from the sleep state to the wake state as you come in and out, in and out. It's, you're not never always in the body, but so people will say that, that you are, it's just a continuation of the body evolving on its own because the body just does its own thing. Once it's created, it just kind of evolves on its own. It's already there for you. It's created, it's done, right? And that's set, in, it's a set point, right? The Evolution of the body is a set point. It's a condition that's been set in place. It's been created. And so all you have to do is take up the body whenever you're in this existence, playing out the play and the role uh, of the soul existence, the essence, right? And so from the point of view of source and your soul, you can come in and take up the human viewpoint um, when you do that. And so you're back in the place where you left off. 
it's a timeline, right? And so from that viewpoint, you're able to take up the body and live your life as you normally would in the human version concept um, from that framework. But if you are aware of it, then then you can delay and you can start working to manipulate it and change it and start being in the present moment um, of who you truly are. And as you are truly existing, you can bring the trueness into your life and change and transform it. So in your in your waking state, as you're coming back into the body, just as you're taking it up, just be mindful how it all just starts coming back to you. It's like this energy vibration, this intelligence of your creation, what your thoughts are, you know, the continuation of it. Um, knowing that we have to get up, do this, do that, go here, go to work, take care of the kids, drop this one off. So it's that perception persona that's playing out on a regular basis that we're doing things. A lot of times it's just uh, programmed. So even for the fact of how you brush your teeth, right? What do you? What is your first thing that you do in the morning? Uh, grab a cup of coffee, <laughs> you know, grab a cigarette. Um, whatever it is that you normally just do just happens automatically. It's just a program. It's conditioned. It just runs on its own. So you don't have to do anything. It just, you're just there following along with it when you're awake, right? You're just going from one thing to another, observing it your day. And at some point you get tired of it and then you kind of just want to leave it or you want to change it and things like that as you're experiencing it because it no longer serves you at that point. And that's a slow process of evolution that's taking place in itself as you're observing it. But if you want to play the play and play in the role in a conscious way in level of awareness, then you want to start taking a look at your life um, and changing things. Okay, I brush my teeth with my right hand. I'm going to brush my teeth with my left hand. Start changing it up intentionally. Start taking charge of your life so you're not just a conditioned result of it but you're consciously creating and doing it with intention how you want it to be right and so i'll brush my teeth in an hour i'm not going to do it right when i first wake up like i used to do i'm not going to do my hair every day the same exact way because when we do things repetitively we're creating unconscious cycles patterns that we just do and we don't have to do anything it's kind of like uh set it and forget it right <laughs> and so uh, we just do it and then it becomes an unconscious evolution of its own it being so we just ex exist and evolve through there and so what kind of life is that just to be unconsciously living right and so it's not having any intentional personal intentional um and that the mind comes in and just tells you what to do okay so it, it has this feed right for you so you don't have to do anything and you're just going along with it in life and so your soul's not really playing a part it's just the observer of your life until at some point the soul's like okay this is enough <laughs> you know we're done with this right you need to evolve you need to start doing stuff and start starts awaking you right and so part of the practice of awakening um is the journey of intention being conscious being awareness uh start being the present moment what am i doing how am i doing this changing it up go down a different road Maybe change your activities. I go to the gym at four. Let me go at five. Let me brush my teeth with my right hand, not my left hand. Let me write with my left hand, not my right hand. Let me uh, make something different this day of the week to eat for dinner, right? So why are you eating hot dogs every Wednesday night, right? <laughs> it's a condition. Why are you doing your laundries every Monday? Do it on Friday, right? Why are you waiting to come back from vacations? It's repetitive behaviors. Um, you know, why are you waiting to come back from vacations and do your laundry? Why don't you do it before and get your house set up so you come back to a clean house after vacation so you can relax instead of having to do and rush around doing stuff before you have to go back to work the next week, right? So these are things just take in consideration. Start taking control of your life. Start being present and being the intentional doer, not in, instead of the observer and the, the doer of things that your mind's telling you or your programs are telling you to do right and to live that out right and so it seamlessly uh, will act in accordance with your will and as you do it it'll transform and become more of your will and you're in control versus your life being in control of you and the programs what's running in behind that you've set in stone as a program that's running in cycles and patterns and so when we can see it from that point of view and we can have a better life, right? We can transform things more. What is it that I like? What is it I don't want? We can question, talk to source, talk to your angels, talk to your guides, um, be more in the present moment, create things that you want to create, not things that are 
just happening to you, which is the victim. Um, and so stepping out of victimhood in our programmings, you know, this is the way life is and doesn't have to be, um, which I was going to do a video on that because like when I, where I work, right, people are under the, the impression that, you know, uh, when they retire, that they only have retirement means, and there's a bunch of people out there who do that, but then there's people that don't do that, and it's just a programming. Like when you retire, it's, it means, you know, to no longer work, and then just take time, and then, you know, our body breaks down, and then they get old, and then they feel old, and then they play out the role of being old. <laughs> and then, But if we understand that retirement is just part of the process, doesn't mean we have to stop working, doesn't mean we have to do this, doesn't mean we have to be poor, we don't have to be broke, we, we, have, we don't have to you know, do a lot of things that we're doing, right? And so you have those that are retiring. And so they, um, there's those who stay active and engaged, and then there's those who don't, right? And so those who stay active, engaged in life and doing things intentionally, purposely creating their lives, they are more to be healthy and happy and live longer lives than those who don't. And so those are the ones that you see, you know, um, who are having illnesses, problems, things like that. Um, who are under the old program that, you know, when you come to the retirement age, you just kind of do whatever, <laughs> you know, which is nice to just do whatever. And of course, you know, a lot of people don't want to work, um, but you can see from the different frames um, what I'm able to see from people's experience and what they're sharing with me um, from what I do as my side gig, you know, they have those experiences where, you know, retirement to them means, you don't work anymore and you just collect social security and you live off disability or you live off um, food stamps, you know, and so that's their, what their belief is, that's their teachings, you know, on how you are after you exist in the world of working, you know, if, you, if that's what you were doing or whatever that situation may be for you. But then you also have the, the group that um, they'll do, just do part-time work and they'll continue to work or they'll start doing creating their own businesses or those, you know, go to the, continue to go to the gym or, you know, and then so you have different viewpoints along that way of what retirement is for that person and their identity and think about it. So, but if you're running on the old programs, it tends to be where you're going to end up suffering more so than if you're intentionally, you know, living your life from that point of view, you know, although I'm retiring, um, you know, it doesn't mean that I give up things that I want to do or where I want to go. And so because if I stop working, then, you know, I'm not doing this here that I'd like to do or want to do. And so then what do I do? Right. And so our lives become shambles. But that's just an example. Um, and so but that you can kind of relate to that um, example with, you know, when we're living our lives, right, it's it's to be intentional. Right. And so it's not to live on the programs that we've set or our belief systems, what we think things are, you know, it's always to be present. And so if you take your life and you start looking at it as you come into the body, right? And what is it the first thing that's your thoughts? First thing in the morning, I got to get up, right? I got to go to work. I gotta... So your mind starts immediately invading you, right? You don't take the time to just sit there and observe and be just present in the moment as you're coming back into the body when things come back into you, right? So things are just, will come back in. It depends on how much you are, you know, connected to your existence of self, your identity of what comes in, how fast it comes in, because some people it may just be like that because you're not aware that you're actually coming in to the body to take it up again, to continue the life that you're living in its existence of whatever's going on that you have going on, whether you're living in the unconscious or you're living in the present moments intentionally. So we have both of those options, you know, and so if you want to live consciously, then it's, you know, a practice of being present in yourself. And that starts every morning. And even Abraham Hicks talks about it, you know, um, you know, when you, when you come in, you know, just take that moment out. You know, a lot of gurus talk about it too. And I found that as for myself, my practice along the journey that I started being aware, you know, as, as a teenager, as my body, my true self is separating and leaving the body, the framework that I'm living in, you know, for that period of time um, on the timeline. And then as I leave the body, you know, I didn't know where I was going. I would have these different lucid dreams. 
but I didn't really understand all the concepts at that point in my life, you know, as a teenager or as, you know, when I was younger, when I was having all these spiritual experiences of, kind, you know, having, you know, dead people in my space. And, you know, I had a whole different viewpoint of it at that time because I didn't know. And then, of course, there's all the fear base around it and things like that. Um, but after my awakening, having the understanding and learning about it and then being observant of, you know, as I'm going off to sleep to watch, to observe, you know, and stay awake as much as possible until I am, it's, you're, you're going out of one state and into another, right? It's the passing through uh, the darkness. And so when my experience, I had the near-death experience and I left the body, I was in the black void and that's what that was, right? And so now it makes sense because I've had the near-death experience and it's shared with me that was what that was, but I was just doing it as I was leaving the body when I was sleeping, right? And that's what we all do. So we get our downloads, our information, a lot of information while we are out of the body. We're reconnecting with the divine source, the divine truth, and having experiences outside of the body while the body's sleeping and resting, right? And so the body is what needs the rest, <laughs> you know, it's not us as who we truly are, because we are energized and revitalized when we are connected to the other side. So when we come back in, there's this lag of time that if you are paying attention, if you're coming back in the body and then you start taking that up in your awareness of what is your day going to hold, you're able to see the space lag time that's coming in. That's the lag time that you exist in, that you can be present and you can spread that out. And so the, what I did in my practice is like the first thing I got up when, when I first woke up, I, what I started to do is I, when I realized I was coming back in, I sat up and I started meditating. I went right in, I sat up right in my bed and I just started meditating. I didn't go back to sleep and I was just being in observance and I would be able to spread out that time longer and longer and longer every day as I did it before the mind would start coming in and taking it up. And so I just lived in that space of time, right? Which was just being present, right? And then as I had come out of the meditation, I observed all that stuff coming back in, what I had to do for the day. And, and so taking back up the body, the being, the existence, you know? And so being able to regulate that for yourself is a big change in perception and reality because you're not actually attached to any of it. You're creating a separation between you and your identity life, right? And so then you have control over it. So you can make intention choice, intentional choices at that point when you have that control and you can start changing uh, your existence and the way you live life, right? Because when you are waking up and it's immediate, you don't have a whole lot of time, <laughs> you know, in order to do that if you're just on this constant flow of the mind just telling you what to do. Bam, 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 right? Which you've already set up for yourself. Because it's just the recreating of cycles, path, what you've programmed for yourself to do, right? Now, I, I've talked with some people about that, and it's like, well, if I do that, I'll be off track of my whole day. And it's like, it's the fear of not having control of your life <laughs> um, that will come up, um, people will experience because if I'm not on time, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, you know, do your practice when you have time, you know, and so get up earlier um, in the morning to do it, right? And so that way you're not late for your scheduled time for the day, but it's the practice of just separating yourself from your life, whereas you're separating um, your yourself from who you truly are, right? And so when we are, and I just did a video on that, you know, when we have our set points, those are separations of who we truly are from source, right, that we live from on those different timelines, which is a separation of self from there. But if you are now learning to separate yourself from life, <laughs> um, that space um, you are bringing yourself back to source. You're bringing more of your true consciousness awareness into that timeline, that space, um, before you take up your daily life, right? And so you're creating that space for source, your higher consciousness to come in, to understand it, to know it, and to be present in your life. You're creating that space for yourself, right? And so you will have different dimensional um, understandings 
from that point of where you are existing and have different dialogues and communications, you know, with the higher self, your soul, spirit, guides, um, different things along the line for there. So it's, all, it's like transforming your life on that timeline, that basis of not just automatically coming into who you are as your identity, your form, the existence that you've created, because it's just a repentance of what's going on is your body, right? It's, it's all done by, it's like muscle memory, if you will. It's just written, already written. You aren't, but your frame of reference as your human self is just written. It's just there, right? And you just take it up. You're taking up the body, which is the form and the presence that you think you are. Uh, the ideas, they come back in uh, from the mind that uh, tells you this and that, and you have to go here and you have to do this. So you're programmed <laughs> in the human self and the lifetime, right? Not beyond this. But if you are able to do the practice every day, you can expand your true self into your present lifetime and make it awareness, right? And so the awareness of yourself grows, which is expansion of time and awareness to who you truly are. And so you live from that set point, not just from the human aversion set point, because then you have time to take advantage of it and make use of the time that you are here living from that viewpoint to expand and evolve from there into another reality, if that makes sense. But as you work with it, um, if you're hands on and want to do self transformation, healing and want to you know, explore deeper within yourself and understand yourself and how everything exists in the way it is. And this is something that you can try out. But if you like existing as human version of yourself, um, definitely do that. But if you are uh, wanting and are on the journey of awakening, uh, self transformation, you know, this is a tool that you can use um, to help transform your timeline and help you to evolve beyond it. And so you can have a higher view of it than you are because when you're separating yourself from your human version then you're able to look at it from a higher view which is source view your spirit's view or i should say your soul's view your essence um, of who you truly are and have more connection to that versus the human form and although yes we come here to have the human existence doesn't mean we have to be the human existence we can live in the human existence of form um, from a higher consciousness level. It doesn't have to be always the lower human version consciousness that we exist as. And so that's the level that you're at when you are in the human version versus the higher version. And so we can create that space within ourselves by becoming more present, you know, and with ourselves at that moment and creating those spaces and stretching them out. And Eckhart Tolle talks about that, you know, being in the present moment, stretching that out all the spaces that apply and one of them is first directly first thing in the morning um, and at night when you are actually leaving and coming in um, into the body and taking it up and so the more you can expand those spaces the more you have higher consciousness um, entering in and living from that space of being um, as you're in the human form right and so it's a whole different way of existing unto itself so um and then it plays out differently for you. Uh, you don't have the, a lot of the suffering that you used to because you're not directly attached to your identity and your life of the human version self. So you can play it out in a different way and form with the direct connection of source because you've expanded that space so you can live in that from that point of view, if that makes sense. So hopefully that helps. If you are wanting to set up a session, a one-to-one -one session, I can help you to navigate that a little bit better. Um, I've done it, and so again, I've just, as I woke up, and just realizing that I'm awake, sat right up, started meditating, went right into meditation, expanded that space before I even let any of the other stuff come in, and that was my time, me time for reconnecting to my true self and who I was, you know, and having that information download and fill within me of the higher consciousness to live from that space, right, which is also part of, you know, coming back to oneness, um, healing and, you know, developing your intuitive abilities and your direct connection and receiving higher guidance, right? And so allowing that space to be there and expand upon it is very important, you know, for those who are on the journey and walking the journey, not just talking about it. And then um, just to give you a quick add, um, as I had, I had a notebook too, which kind of helped me to expand a little bit more further um, from that point of view as I woke up, went right into meditation um, and I have a certain way that I sit and meditate, and I can give that to you if you wanted to. Um, and that information, we can do that in a one-to-one -one session. Um, 
I at, at then at some point of that journey, um, I was able to bring the, the breath to a stillness and be in samadhi, right? And so, you know, I would go into where I, I wasn't even breathing, you know, I was in the body, but I wasn't of the body, right? And so there was that separation of being in the body in totality, right? In my existence and my awareness. And so from that point, um, you know, I was able to exist from there and understanding that viewpoint, being one with the breath. It was also another experience um, is to be uh, one with the breath. So I experienced that in my meditations in the morning. And then there's a lot you can do from that point. And then from the point of meditation, before I started coming back into the human version, um, I would start journaling and writing all down the um, information um, that I was connecting to because I've created that space for that to come in. You can't if your mind is constantly going and you're on the programs, you're not leaving space for you to connect and to receive divine guidance higher. You know, so if we're totally cut off and in the human version, um, which is a lower consciousness um, version of self, uh, we are totally cutting ourselves off. We don't have higher conscious coming in, so we live from that place, right? And that's the separation, you know, of all those things that I talked about in the other video. And so we can't see from the higher perspective if we are attached to the lower version of self, right? And so it's all the dimensions within you. We're dimensional beings, have three different levels. I did a video on that, um, and so you can check that out. Um, but, uh, you know, as I go and I'm making the videos, it's all going to be connected. So if you just watch the videos, at some point you'll get it and can reflect upon it, and you can use them for, you know, your journey um, if it's helpful for you in understanding and maybe connecting dots or tools that you can use to help you along your journey um, like this one um, you can integrate them into your practice and work with it and to see if it it works for you right and it doesn't and i'm gonna tell you my meditation journey up to this point started back in 2010 so it's not a one and done and so a lot of people when i talk to them about meditation oh i can't meditate but you're saying you can't and so you won't right and so <laughs> it's a continuous practice and you expand upon it when i first started meditating i can only meditate for a few minutes and the mind came in because that's the mind control, right? Your mind is in control of you because you're not yet in control of yourself. You don't have the ability to do it. And it's not that you can't. It's you're not wanting to sit and practice and, and make it your your goal, make it your practice, make it you in control of it, right? And so as you evolve it, it'll happen because at some point it went to like 15 minutes and it went to 20. And then I came back and it was like an hour and a half later and I was like, where was I, right? I was out of the body, you know? And so then from that point, I went on to doing out-of-body experiences, traveling um, outside of the body while I was sitting in my body, was meditating. I was out doing things like yogis do, right? And so it leads to that if you would just take the time out to do it every day, right? And you just have to be intentional about it, right? So it's all about awareness, um, and that's true, truly are. We are either the dense version or the undense version, but it's all about to you and all your choice, uh, Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, drop them below or reach out and we'll set up an appointment for a session one-to-one. -one. All right, thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys, share, like, and subscribe so other people can also receive these informational downloads and information practices and tools, tips that you can use.